sit in here. And I realize what the world's like for him. And I feel bad for giving him a hard time. It's true. I mean, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm standing here and I can barely see over the steering wheel. Oh, that's way too low. You sat on my seat. We got the same size legs. You just got a longer upper torso. Hey guys, we're here with the Dixon 55 Chevy pickup. Um, since the last time that we saw it, we've moved on from installing the bed on the frame. We actually now have the cab, front clip, windows, grills, things of that nature. Um, we've got a majority of the uh, wiring completed, power windows, etc. We've had Tanner here doing the wiring um, and then assisting me with a lot of the other components. Uh, he'll be assisting us on this truck until the end. What's close is the 450's too close. Pull forward. Jesus. <laughs> um, most of the plumbing is finished now. We've moved on to you know, the air ride system is all working. We've patterned the bed for the C decking. We've installed the tailgate. Uh, rear roll pan and bumper. Um, currently just working on wrapping up a few of the odds and ends as far as power steering lines, things of that nature. We're looking forward to getting the underhood sheet metal back from the body shop. Um, then that will allow us to assemble that and finish up AC lines and coolant, uh, mount the power steering pump reservoir, things like that. And hopefully that's followed by the hood. That's the last piece that they have. We've got some exhaust rework to do in the back, but we're not too concerned about that at this point. We've fired the engine up. Uh, we're trying to get it to a running driving state so we can drive it onto the trailer and take it to get the interior finished. We want some strong people, so get someone from back here. Don't go in there. Just so everybody's clear, Edgar takes off his ring every time this one girl shows up at the shop. <laughs> Don't tell his wife. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Ashley. I'm here at Switch Suspension for Whip Check Wednesday. We're going to feature the 1970 Chevy Nova. ago from Dino. Dino had put the 350 crate motor in, small block, and then just over the past couple years we added Sniper EFI, the electronic fuel injectors. We ended up with some overheating issues where it wasn't staying cool enough, so we upgraded the radiator, put dual fans in. It was only bagged in the front originally, so we bagged the rear and then we redid the front. We did two air tanks in the back. So we had some issues with the, when we were custom ordering the rims for it, I had a specific look I was trying to go for. So we custom ordered the wheels. There were some really awesome truck wheels. Waited 12 weeks to get them put them on and they hit the steering. They didn't fit. So then we had to wait 12 more weeks, got another set, those didn't work either. So then finally we got the right offset, got them dialed in, they look gorgeous. And then after we did that, we upgraded the Willwood brakes to 14 inch Willwood brakes, stopped on a dime. We did a great car show a couple weeks ago where we cruised up to, to Prescott, Arizona for Cruise to the Pines and uh, me and a couple girlfriends rode up together and it's just so much fun. There's no AC yet, parts are on order, but it's just so fun to cruise and we went, you know, drove two hours and it was perfect the whole time. It took a little over eight years from start to finish on the paint job. That was done before we owned it. And actually, the, one of the coolest parts about the paint job is there are two different colors of lipstick. So when Dino went to have it painted, he walked in with two sticks of lipstick. They made it happen, and it's absolutely gorgeous. When Dino went to get rid of it, he couldn't just sell it, because it was something that he's wanted to hold on to forever. Right. So it kind of, the opportunity came. He wanted to make sure it went to a good home, that someone would appreciate it. So we ended up getting it, and it's been my baby ever since. Be much better. 
Just a little trim off the top. A few more miles out of this thing. Nobody even notices. What's up guys? Welcome back to another Know About It. Today we're going to be talking about some new AccuAir goodies that we have to offer for your endo tanks. We are now offering the compressor mount. It's going to mount directly to your AccuAir Endo VT or CVT that's been converted to VT. With these comes the mounting hardware to get to the Endo tank, all your nuts, bolts, washers. Your Endo compressor bracket is going to go directly onto those adapters and thread right into the tank. We offer the Endo tank compressor mount in three different sizes to fit all different sizes of the Vier compressors available. Anywhere from your 380 to 400, 444, 480, 485s, and the new 310 compressors. Along with all that hardware and the bracket, you're going to receive a street elbow along with it, depending on which compressor you have to be able to route this directly into the tank, make it a little bit easier. There's available quarter inch ports underneath the tank. The other new mount we have available is going to be our ECU mount. Same kind of deal, comes with all the hardware necessary, your mounting bracket to go to the endo tank, nice little L bracket, mounts directly underneath, display it all, whether you're running you know, a single compressor, dual compressor, you can mount it all right to the tank, one shot. Edgar taking off early like always. It's five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it is. Look. <laughs> I think tomorrow I'm gonna actually like buy lunch, but don't tell Tom. I'm gonna just tell him that I You're gonna go to Winter Snitzel, but we're not gonna really go to Winter Snitzel. Well, we can go wherever. We're just telling him we're going to Winter Snitzel. Can you imagine how mad Tom would be if we go to the Carnesaria and tell him we're going to Winter Snitzel? We changed our mind. He may never talk to us again. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> On this truck what we're going to end up doing i'm going to actually lower the lower the middle section down cover up the old the middle of the firewall originally was real tall real rounded to allow for the distributor of the original engine to be in place since we're not going to have any of that there's no sense in having the very large opening there so just bringing it down going to straighten it off kind of fit it to the engine as opposed to fitting an engine into the into the truck we're putting the engine in place and then we'll fit the truck to the engine What we're doing as well is by lowering that down it's going to give us a place to kind of hide the coils we'll hide the coils in the back behind the motor somewhere and run the wires out so it'll look a little bit more like an older style engine so then with the new valve covers we have uh they're real nice looking valve cover we're going to really clean up the engine we're going to do some other polish work and stuff to kind of match them but now with those in place those delete the coils which are normally mounted on top of the valve covers so this is the old valve cover the original what comes on the lt for uh, the coils normally mount here so it's not a real nice looking piece it's very functional but not real nice real, not real pretty so in comparison you know these valve covers are going to make a big difference in the overall look of the engine you don't have the coil up here and then it gets rid of with the coil there you've got the wire harness has to run here and so you've got wires running here and plug wires running here plug wires running here so
by getting rid of that coil now, the wiring harness isn't going to be here at all. These plug wires will run probably up to here and then be lengthened to run to the back where the coils end up. So yeah, it'll just be overall a much cleaner, nicer looking engine bay. Perfect. Just wanted to knock that dent out. I'm actually throwing this in the trash, but I wanted to make sure when it went in the trash, that it didn't have a dent in it. There it is, dent free. No, we've, uh, I've done a lot of times relocating coils. Coils are ugly. So, our plan under the here today is just to, um, we're going to put some metal in here, we're going to finish it up, and ship it, get paid. <laughs> what do you mean by that? On the underhood of the truck, basically what we're doing, uh, obviously all of the custom sheet metal uh, needs to look really cool, needs to have a good design, but also these forward pieces, I ended up making it into a two-piece design. So the front panel will be removable as well as the shroud that goes over the radiator. Um, because once all of this is closed up, you have no access to any of the AC components um, or the radiator or anything like that. So, you know, hopefully they're never gonna need to have to get in there to get in to do anything, but it's better to have it serviceable. It's easy to slide them over each other and kind of stretch them and wedge them right now because they're bare sheet metal. Once they have paint, bodywork, everything like that on them, they need to go slide into place easily without scratching themselves. The idea, once this is all bolted together, this will have a real fine um, seam between it. So it should almost give the illusion that it's one piece, but still be removable and serviceable. I tried to make it a single piece, but because it actually encompasses, goes around the radiator hoses and things like that, this panel, this inner panel has to fall inward before it can come out. If I didn't do this around the radiator, then this would be able to lift straight up, but I think this is gonna give it a cool look to have it all built in there, so. Yeah, so on the firewall, it's just getting, trying to figure out the final design before we bead roll it. Just trying to come up with some cool designs that are going to fit with everything else I've done, as well as uh, the engine, just kind of make everything look like it's supposed to be there, not just like, oh, we here we threw some, threw some metal at it. So keeping all of the look, keeping the design is just where sometimes it's drawn multiple times before it ends up getting actually done. my friend um, his name's Kevin uh, Kevin the tape ball essentially every piece of tape that I use for patterning or masking anything like that when it comes off it gets added to Kevin and uh, he's getting pretty big these days <laughs> started off as a small little ball that I would throw at people from time to time and then I decided it would be fun to see how big Kevin could get so he's uh, uh, Kevin's He's a few years now. Really? Maybe maybe a year and a half or so. Yeah. And he's as big as my head now. So. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta remember, this isn't like this is just used tape. This isn't like I'm making this tape ball. This is just right. I'm not. I don't add extra tape to it or anything like that. I mean, this is just literally little six, eight inches, sometimes a little longer pieces of tape that I use for masking for marking things and then when I peel it off it just became a thing and now I just now keep adding them. Yep. Everybody check in from time to time, see how Kevin's how doing. Long?